Hello and welcome. My name is Chris. My handle is Montevaca, and this is the first of my uh, Blender uh, video tutorials. Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to take a quick look at uh, importing data from the Microsoft's Connect camera into Blender for use with making 3D models. Uh, kind of just a quick overview of how I'm trying to do it and whether or not I actually think this is a viable option. Um, to actually be able to use, uh, use most of the stuff I'm going to be talking about, you're going to need at least a little bit of a background in programming, uh, enough to be able to compile something from source. I think there are pre-compiled binaries for some of these uh, programs that I'm going to show you, but um, they might be a little hard to come by. Um, well, let's get started. Uh, first, I'm largely going to be showing you guys two links. The first one is uh, at openconnect.org slash wiki uh, main underscore page. Um, I'm going to put these in the comments as well. Uh, if we pull that up, this is where we're going to be getting the drivers for the uh, Kinect camera. Uh, Microsoft does, has not made drivers for the Kinect camera freely available, so these are hack drivers uh, made openly available through uh, open source networks. There's actually a few people doing a few different kinds of drivers at the moment. I'm using these guys. Uh, it's, uh, their drivers are called uh, libfreenect. But um, I, from what I've looked into, uh, this seems to be one of the more popular ones and more versatile as well. Uh, if you come to this page and come down here to get started right away by installing the software on your platform, and this will give it a breakdown by Linux, OS X, and Windows. Uh, we're going to be doing Windows. We come down here, and this will give us uh, the ability get down here to download the source code. And we're also going to have to download the uh, dependencies. And it gives you a step-by-step -step, uh, process through which downloading the source code, downloading the dependencies and compiling them, and then installing the drivers. I'm not going to go over that right now. The actual like uh, how-to guide on the site is very pretty easy to understand. I mean, you will need a little bit of knowledge on how to actually use things like CMake and uh, Visual Studios and stuff like that. But if you've done anything like that before, you should be able to figure it out. Um, once you've got the drivers installed and working, uh, you will be given a sample project uh, program somewhat like this that will be in that uh, source package. And if you run it, you can see how the thing is running. So this is our view of our Kinect camera. We've got uh, on the right is the actual video, on the left is the depth sensor. So right now I've just got it looking at the a, a chair and my hallway and the depth is picking up this data, data on the left. Uh, right now that's not actually all that helpful at the moment. You We could be digging into the source trying to program something ourselves to actually make use of that data. But let's find somebody who's done it already for us. So that's going to be the second link. If we come down here to uh, nicholas.burris.name uh, slash uh, index.php slash research slash uh, connect rbg demo uh, v4. If we go to his site, this is uh, one dude who's been programming different applications for the actual uh, connect drivers that have been going on. And so if you download his uh, source, he actually does have uh, pre-compiled binaries. So if you just want to, if you've had enough down, uh, compiling for uh, the drivers, you can just go ahead and download these, his uh, executables. I, I've actually done that just because I didn't feel like doing more compiling at the moment just to try it out. And they seem to run pretty well. So uh, download it, and he's got a number of things. So let's... Uh, open one of them and show you what it actually uh, looks like. So the first thing we're gonna want, I'm gonna show you is the RGB viewer. The RGB viewer uh, is probably gonna be RGBD view viewer. Uh, it's it's gonna be what the main, u uh, the main program we're gonna use for importing stuff into Connect. When we first open it up like this, this is our main view. 
um, a few of the functions we're going to want to look at. If we go into filters here, we can control the tilt of the camera by sliding this tilt uh, slider around so we can actually zoom in on whatever we want to be scanning. The other big thing we're going to want to take a look at is the depth thresholds. Um, we are really going to want to try and focus on just one object because uh, you'll see later that it becomes way too complicated to try and get a full scene. So let's try, just try and get the uh, chair solely in focus so that we don't have to we're gonna have to clean up everything else that's in this picture so that's pretty good so once we've got it looking the way we want it in the depth sensor we're gonna open up uh, 3d view and this will give you a little bit of an idea of what what the uh, connect is actually seeing so we can rotate it around a bit and see the uh, see the actual uh, depth calculations that they're doing which is actually pretty good so far and right now uh, what we're going to want to do this, this is actually save it into a file that uh, Blender can recognize so first we're going to want to change it to triangles by clicking the triangle button and then we're going to hit save mesh when I hit this it's going to the computer is going to freeze for a second so I'm going to stop the recording here and wait till it's actually saved the mesh and we can uh, move on from there okay Okay, so our program is done saving the model, so we can close this out. And what we're going to want to do is open up the directory that the uh, RGBD viewer is in. If we scroll down, we can find our model. Our model is going to be named currentmesh.ply. Uh, this PLY file is a Stanford file. I have actually haven't had a lot of experience with it. All I know is Blender can import it. Also down here, we've got a uh, current me mesh texture. This is just a picture of the scene that you can actually use to help texture it after we get done um, messing with it some more. So what we're gonna wanna do now is open up Blender. Uh, I'm gonna be using the 2.49 uh, version of Blender. I actually like 2.56, but um, it's still in beta and they haven't ported over any of the scripts uh, yet and the actual import script for uh, PLY is not uh, working in 2.56 yet so you kinda have to use this older version which is fine it's uh, the UI I find uh, is a little harder to understand in this older version but otherwise it's blender and it works so uh, first we're gonna get an empty scene and come up here to import and come out down here to Stanford PLY and so what we're going to want to do is go find our current uh, mesh right sorry current scene right there and we're going to want to hit import uh, again when I hit this it's going to take a few seconds and kind of lock up the computer so I'm going to pause the video here and uh, restart it once the uh, the mesh is uh, loaded so okay, okay so our uh, model is loaded and we can scroll in and take a look at it and the first thing we're going to notice is that the actual model looks to be a little bumpy and garbled and stuff and we can also click on it and take a look up at the uh, vertex and face counts and they're extremely high um, this is just uh, an artifact of the way the connects does these scans. It's not very high resolution, so you're going to have to actually deal with like this garbled image and try to actually uh, lower down this vertex count. So um, the first thing I, I would suggest to do is take, take this model and we're going to want to get rid of all the background uh, other than the object. So uh, just like selecting it and edit mode and uh, doing a bunch of selections of the vertices in the back and just deleting them. It's going to be a little hard to show you guys that here with the video capturing software because uh, it makes it run slow. So here let me just load up uh, um, one that I've already got that done for. So. Okay, so I've loaded up a model, a version of the model that uh, I've gone in and already cleaned up the background for. 
I've also, in this version of the model, added a modifier to it called Decimate that uh, allowed me to uh, de-res the model a little bit. It reduces the number of vertices in the model via ratio if you uh, want to set it. And I've done that a few times till it started uh, screwing up the, uh, the model a little bit. And then I've also gone in and added, uh, if you enter into the edit mode and under scripts, there's a script called uh, Poly Reducer that comes with this version of Blender. And if you run that a few times, it works very similar to Decimate. It just, uh, since it comes at it a, a slightly different way, you're able to do it a few more times after Decimate stops working to continue to de-res the model without like completely destroying it. Um, right now, this model is to the point where it's pretty much, uh, that's all I can do, uh, do with the scripts and the modifiers. Um, if I want to clean this up any further, I'm going to have to go in here and by hand merge vertices and collapse vertices and get it actually looking a lot more like a real model. I've actually already done that, so let me load that uh, version up. Here we go. So this is a uh, final product on this test run that I have been doing for the Connect. Um, so we look at the wireframe of this. I've basically just gone in and collapsed all the really complex vertices into smaller number of vertices. Um, honestly, it's not that great looking of a model. Um, it's largely due to me not being very well versed with Blender at the moment. I'm still learning. Um, but if we can even just look at it, it's much better than I probably could have done without the help of the Kinex, uh data and stuff. So uh, I think the, the process is definitely a good one. It's just... Uh, um, it needs to be modified over the time. Um, if we take a look at the also the model, it, we can see that the it's going to definitely be in uh, similar proportions to the original scanned object, which allows us to, if we can get the exact right uh, perspective, allows us to texture it really easily. We get in the right perspective and then do uh, UV unwrap into uh, from that perspective, and we can just place it on top of the uh, reference image that we got from the Kinect and makes it really easy to texture it which was really a nice surprise. Um, in all honesty this this process is actually pretty cool. Um, you just have to go into it knowing that it's not going to save you a whole lot of time. This isn't a process that where you're going to be able to scan an object and have it ready for use the, in 20 minutes. You know it's honestly going to take you just as long if not longer to scan an object and use the connect data to make a model as it would be just to make the model from scratch. The upside to it is that it's a little easier to get the the, the correct proportions and the extra extraneous details from that model by using the connect data and the your model might end up actually looking a little bit better than you could normally do just making it yourself. Um, you just have to go into it with the correct mindset, and if it's going to be, if you're trying to make a simple model, it's probably not a good idea to try and scan it. Easier just to make it yourself. So uh, I'm going to continue messing with this process. Hopefully, make it a little bit better, a little bit easier to use and stuff. Um, and I'll keep you guys informed. Thanks for.